Good morning, art ravers. So this is a very early video. I'm getting started on an art project that I have. Um, it's a dog portrait commission of a borzoi. And this is something that I would normally share in the inner circle, but since this is open door week to join the membership, then I thought I would share it on the main page. And this is kind of like the little bit of the tedious work that goes into making a dog portrait really, really amazing. And that's the prep work. So it's a lot of the things you don't see normally. People wouldn't necessarily share this part because it's kind of boring, but I'm gonna tell you that this is what I do for a dog portrait commission to really get it right and to make the painting even more successful. It's in the prep work. So I'm gonna show you some of my techniques for drawing and transferring the image, how I made decisions on the size and proportion, the canvas, uh, my discussions with the client, and I'm gonna try and keep it as time efficient as possible because I also am also teaching later this morning. Um, I am teaching in the inner circle. We're doing our um, holiday on ice, ice skate painting this morning. But before I start my live at 10 o'clock, I'm gonna get started on this dog portrait and do some prep work. So here we go. I have, um, I'm gonna show you the picture that I have um, that I'm gonna be using as the main photo reference. And then I'm gonna show you how I go about um, doing the sketches, preparing the canvas, and then hopefully this afternoon, I'll be ready to paint. And I'll share that with you later on also. So let's get started. I'll show you the photo and we'll do some sketches. Okay, so let me get my camera set up here. Come on, rotate properly. There we go. Good morning, Colleen. Good morning, Jody. Okay, so I have tracing paper and I have my iPad. Let me get my glasses on. And I'm gonna show you this beautiful picture of a dog um, that I'm gonna be using. Let's see, where are you? Here we go. Okay, so this is the, this is the, pic, the picture that I'm gonna be using. Now, I do have a few things I'm gonna do on my, iPad, on my iPad first before I bring it onto a tracing paper pad, but I am gonna use the tracing paper to do some raw sketching. So you can watch me do that as we prep. So what I'm doing is I'm, this is gonna be on a 10 by 20 canvas and I'm using this extra thick canvas because I'm gonna paint and wrap it around the sides. So that's just the canvas. But what I've done is I've gone into, um, let me make sure that I've got the camera set up properly. Well, hi, Rachel. So we're doing a dog portrait this morning. I'm sharing this on the main page because um, it's open door week for our Inner Circle membership. So I thought, why not just do a, um, a live and share with you my project? This is what I would normally do in the Inner Circle, but I'm gonna do it on the main page so that everybody can kind of get a peek of what I, some of the bonus things that I throw into the, the Inner Circle that isn't even listed necessarily on some of our promotional emails. Okay, so this is the dog painting. Let me go to Procreate. So for Procreate, I created a 10 by 20 um, image canvas, and then I imported the photo. So now I can see exactly what it would look like as far as the size and proportion on a 10 by 20 canvas. Let me put my microphone on actually. Okay. There, Ooh, that's probably better. And now I'm going to sketch out a little bit of a rough draft. But now again, I wanna make sure that I have the right proportions because that will make a huge difference in my canvas drawing when I actually transfer this to the canvas. So let me get out my ruler. And since this is, you know, this is capturing an exact image, so there's not a lot of room for a lot of variety of sketches. Um, if I do a dog portrait that is from multiple photos where I come up with the, the pose or I have to, you know, capture a certain expression, then I will do multiple sketches. But this is, since this is this one image, I'm gonna be doing just this one sketch. So first let me put on here a, um, a quick 
five by five, okay, and five inches across. This is, I'm gonna make it twice as tall as I am wide, because that's the same as a 10 by 20. So it's a pretty narrow canvas, but seeing it on paper helps me to place the to place her, our girl. Okay, so what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to actually sketch out some lines with my Apple Pencil, and this is something you could even do on a regular computer too, just by putting a grid on it. So let me see if I know how to do this. I haven't done a grid in a while. Um, let's see, canvas drawing guide. Okay, so the drawing guide is, edit drawing guide, is a feature on Procreate. I'm going to edit the drawing guide and I want the grid size to be bigger. Well, that's good. Okay, so now I can see, it's very hard to see actually because it's white, but I can see that center line and where it hits the dog. This is just going to help me with basic sizing. It's not, it's not super um, perfect, but a grid is a great way to. Um, let me get the center line here. A grid, a grid is a, is a great way to get the proportions down of your subject. Let's see, I need two and a half, and I want the center. So I want to just get a center line going in both directions. That'll help me to place her and to start studying exactly her proportions, because this is kind of an unusual pose. I mean, it, she's, it, she's jumping over um, this jump, and it is a little tricky. So I'm gonna go two and a half, five. I'm gonna divide this into quarters, because I'm gonna just do a big, giant grid. Two and a half, zero, two and a half. Now, ultimately, I'm going to rely on my drawing ability um, and capturing the likeness of the dog, but the grid does help tremendously with getting things sort of set. All right, so just for the height of the dog, I can see that over the quarter line, her head is about here, okay? Just to get the top in, and her ears come a little higher. Let me see if I can see if you can see that okay. Yeah, now usually I draw really, really light. I'm gonna see if I can move my camera down a little bit just so you can see. I like to draw very, very light, so you may not see too much. Oh hey Jen, good morning. Um, so this is not a, a usual art rave painting. Um, this is a private commission, and I'm taking you behind the scenes just to kind of give you a an idea of how I prep for a, a um a commission that is this exact. Okay, so I've got her head in here. I know her ears are kind of flopping up a little strange because she's in a jumping pose, but I'm gonna just get that in there. Now her chest, like this center dot, I can see where it is on her chest. That helps me too. So she's got her coat coming out here. This is just for placement. I can see that this is, her paw is, on here, her paw comes down to here. So I want to just get in the main. I can see that line and her paws about here. Now I'm doing it lightly because I can always adjust. Now her arm is foreshortened because it's coming towards us and her shoulder is down way down here. This is her hair. And let's see, her chest is going down below this line. There's a line here. So I want to think about her anatomy also. Her shoulders I know are going to be right in here. She's pretty straight. And I think this paws a little over this way. It's a little bit more at an angle. Okay, so then her, this is this, there's a line here on my grid and she's, her, her shoulder comes 
way out to here. So she's definitely pushed over to the side of the canvas. And I'm using her the lines as a guide, and I'm also trying to make sense of her anatomy because it's this is a unique dog too because they're very elongated, and I want to make sure I capture that as well. It's just everything has to be fed to me through these lines. All right, so let's see. This line here is where her other ankle is, right about here. And her other toes come down to this line. And her arm's going to reach up here. Now where her arm is actually above this line, this, this arc to her. So this is where I'm just getting her anatomy in. Here's one shoulder. And her face is actually not, it's actually a little further over this way. Let's see, probably about, I think we've got another line in here. So I want this to look just like the photograph as much as possible. This is not my dog, so I want to make sure that it looks exactly like what the owner sees in her dog and what the person who is commissioning the portrait is seeing in the dog. And that is a tough job. But I also want to make it look anatomically correct. That's tricky. It's tricky on a pose that's this, um, so I'm gonna, let me see her. Got to really get her, um, the difference between like where her, her body ends is pretty straight right here. So it goes from her muzzle here about down like this. There's very little bump there. Her hair is kind of floating backwards. Boars always have very long muzzles, so her eyes are going to be fairly high. And I can see that on the image, but I want to get that. I'm going to put a lot more time into her face. Well, good morning, Ina. Nice to see you on Facebook this morning. All right, so I am working through a, a portrait commission that I'm gonna be painting later today, but I wanted to take you behind the scenes on some of the prep work that I'm doing because this is very important to the success of the painting. And it's kind of the tedious part that you don't often see when you see people painting online. Usually they, they just show the painting part but I want to show you the other parts that I'm doing too because this is super important to you know what you will need to do if you are painting a portrait you have to kind of go through a lot of prep work and she's looking strange I'm going to kind of get her center line in here because she's slightly tilted this way just ever so slightly which can be tricky for the artist because then it looks like you're painting her crooked but because she's not directly in front you can see a little of her body on this side, so she is slightly angled. And she's just a bunch of hair on this side. Yeah, see, I can't have her looking this way. Right now, my picture looks very weird because you can't see her back legs very much, and you can't make sense of any anatomy back here. It's just a bunch of fluff. But I do want to make it look like beautiful hair because the boars always do have beautiful hair and she needs to you need to be able to see that. Like a 
all the hair down here. I'm going to just get a little I'm going to just put in my little my chunks that I can see here that are I can see her back foot over here which is going to be nice and gray and the podium goes here Boars always have these super long toes, or like finger toes. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting the lines in based on this grid. And let me come up a little bit more on her face and then just work a little bit more on her face. So she's got, she definitely has some good shadows in here. I think her eyes might be a little lower, so I'm going to take her eyes down a little lower. So in the inner circle, um, which is open this week, this is the last time I'm going to open it till the end of the year, probably till spring. And when you join, um, you can take part in the different things that I add into the membership. So I definitely have three painting sessions that we do. Um, you get to watch me create new art for ArtRave and for my licensing program and for the, the events and tutorials that I have. Now those, those are part of the membership and so are the morning minis, but I also include things like this when I'm doing a portrait commission or if I'm gonna be doing something like for fun on my own I will oftentimes put the camera on and share it within the inner circle because that's where a lot of people are painting to really learn and get more confident and maybe take on a portrait commission. Um, Linda Wharton, who is a inner circle member, has been doing dog portraits and paintings of fox toy fox terriers and she has been sharing them in the auction that she helps to organize for the to to toy fox terrier rescue group and so she's taking her, what she's been learning and making paintings for people and using it to, to raise money for the toy fox terrier rescue so I think that that is just a fabulous example of her just becoming more confident as a painter and she still has a long way to go because she's not as confident as she needs to be her paintings look amazing but she's keeps going and it's just building up that confidence slowly. But her paintings are looking awesome. And her, her, um, and her love of toy fox terriers definitely shows in her artwork. Okay, this is a, this looks strange because it's black and white, but I'm just, I'm blocking in the shadows. So this is more for me to also get a better grasp of what this dog looks like. I'm making refinements and it's more about what's going on in my mind. This is not going to be the finished product, not even close, but this is my time to study the dog. I am realizing that I have to make adjustments to her forehead, to her eyes, to her ears, and you have to spend time getting to know your subject and really studying it. That's why these pencil sketches are called studies. So she's got this little white streak. So 
So her whole head and is black, so I'm just going to pencil this in really lightly. And I'm going to get my darker pencil. Let's see, where do I want to dump this? So let me just sharpen. I'm going to sharpen up a black pencil. This is a, a great drawing pencil that is called an ebony pencil. And this is what's going to give me some really good blacks. So I'm just going to get in get in some, do some, a little more blacks in here. And I might move her eyes around a few times before I get really a feel of her expression and her face. I think I made her eyes a little too high still. So this is a kneadable eraser. It just kind of helps to pick up some of the, the pencil, lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to move her eyes down a little bit. Now when I'm painting, I'm going to spend a lot more time on her eyes, but like I said, this is kind of more for me to memorize and learn her face and make observations. So this is an observation session for me. And it's important to do this anytime you're taking on a, a portrait or a commission or even any painting if you want to be doing something that is, let's say you're painting a house or a barn. If you paint it, or draw it rather, if you draw it several times, you're going to be much more familiar with it, and then when you paint it, you'll be like an expert. So you gotta become an expert in what you're, what you're drawing. So the reason I'm adding more shading into here, this is helping me to prepare for painting this later. This is a study and it helps tremendously for when I paint her because then when I paint her, I'm not struggling as much. I can do all my little struggles here and, and see if I can capture her on this in this stage then I'll definitely have more success when I'm painting her later this afternoon. And I'm also noticing too little, like little highlights. See, I can see that little highlight of little white fur under her nose. And there's some, there's a little bit of a white highlight that defines her face. So I'm gonna be having fun with painting that because that's gonna be what's gonna make her head really come to life. Also, there's a lot of shadows. She's a little bit backlit, so I'm gonna be very careful about the shadows that I lay into her chest of her hair going back. I'm gonna get her little spot in here. I'm using a grid. So if you didn't see this in the beginning, it's very hard to see the white lines on my grid, but I used Procreate to create a grid, and I'm also put a grid on my, my sketch so that I can make sure that I have her painted and drawn out accurately, that things are placed properly, because she could really look strange fast in this, this unique pose that she's in. So we gotta get that black area in there. See, one thing I can also do too on Procreate, I'm gonna see if I can do this. I'm gonna 
finish the drawing guide done. I'm going to enhance the contrast a little bit so I can see some of the, let me see, color balance, do, 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 do. brightness, saturation, nope. Where's her contrast? Hmm. Guess I'll do See if I brighten it up I can see more details in the black. And if I darken it down I can see more details in the white. So that's something you can always play with is the I'll have to play, play with the contrast in my photo app because I can't find the contrast in Procreate. But playing with contrast will help you see the shadows and the highlights. So let me um, let me see if I can I can do that. So I'm going to go to I'm going to put this into my photo app, and I'm going to show you how to pump up the contrast so that you can see the lights and darks. Because when we paint, we do base coat, highlights, and shadows, and so you want to really know those those highlights and shadows really well. So let me save this just into my photos. And I'm going to go into the photos and I'm going to pump up the contrast. So watch what happens when I do this. I can use this photo or this photo. I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to edit it. I'm going to go to contrast. And I'm going to increase the contrast. See there's low contrast, high contrast. If I increase the contrast, it exaggerates the lights and darks. And I can better see the areas of shadow. See this deep shadow around the bottom of her chest? That has to be nice and dark when I'm painting it as well so that it can really communicate the, the dimensions of her chest. She also has, of course, those dips within their, their chest where they have the center point about here and then the shadows around it. got a little shadow underneath here, the shadow on this foot that's not touching the, that, that's, that shadow is pretty dark. And those are the darkest shadows. And now they don't have to be this dark, but at least I know I'm building up that knowledge of her shadowy areas. And then this paw is very dark because it's curving under, so I'm going to get a little shadow in there. So I want to get her neck really understood here. Okay, so I think I've got a pretty good understanding of where her where she's going to be on the canvas and this big plume to her tail is a definite focal point. We, we can't see her tail, we can't see her back legs, but we can just imagine with all this beautiful fur that she's just flowing as she's jumping. Okay, gotta watch the time. Okay, yeah, I've got time. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with um, the way she looks. I think that this looks too bent in my opinion. So I'm going to make an adjustment to that. Now that I look back at it, that looks a little bit too, it, there is some bend to it, but I don't think it's quite this much. So let me make an adjustment there. I think that it's better if it is about here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. They have such a, such a dainty foot. You can't have her foot not look dainty.
just so foreshortened. This looks awkward. And I want to get the flow of her fur, so I'm noticing that there's a, a good flow here. This is where I'm going to change the direction of my brush strokes. And boars always are very narrow chested, so I can actually bring this in probably even a little bit more because they're so narrow chested. So the highlight's going to be right there. Okay, I think I've got a pretty good understanding of this dog's highlights and shadows. And now I want to just get the jump in there because I, I want to make the jump make sense. So the, the bar is definitely going to be here. So let's get this in here. And I'm going to actually make this red here because it'll make her paw stand out more. And maybe in the background here, I don't want this to distract from her, but maybe just in the background I'll have a little, little jump, I don't know, a little blurry jump in the background. That I'll have to ask the, the client if she wants this or not. She wants to see a little bit of a blurry previous jump or just this, this bar. Okay, so I'm ready, I'm ready to show this to the client. I'm going to give her an option of, you know, if she wants to make any changes to her so far. And then I'm going to go and work on putting her onto the finished canvas. Okay, well, thanks for joining me on this little adventure prepping for my portrait. Um, I am going to be teaching a new painting this morning. It's going to be in the inner circle and it's a new painting for actually for February because we're painting ahead. We paint ahead several months. The inner circle is the first group to see my painting live and then I share it on the, um, the website in the coming weeks and coming up towards January for our for our February painting. So everything is happens a couple months ahead and the inner circle group gets the first um, experience of those paintings. And this morning, oh no actually I'm going to be doing that this afternoon. This morning is our scheduled painting where we're painting a beautiful winter scene of Holidays on Ice. So Holidays on Ice is in our individual tutorial gallery, but it's not going to be available until the 16th. Um, but we're painting it live this morning in the inner circle. All right, well, thanks for joining me this morning for our drawing session, and I will see you guys a little bit later when I start the painting.